Welcome to another exciting interview here from the sidelines of the ICR 2023 conference in Orlando, Florida. I'm Jared Banks, editor at large of IPO Edge and CorpGov, as well as Exec Edge, joined by my guests from the Regis Corporation, CEO Matthew Doctor, and CFO Kirsten. Zupfer. That's right. I think I've got that right. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, fantastic. Well, welcome to the program. Very nice to see you. Uh, let's start with you, Matt. Absolutely. What attracted you to Regis? Yes, yeah, so absolutely. I'll give a little bit of a, a background on what attracted me. So uh, I started my career in finance. Uh, I was an investment banker for J.P. Morgan uh, to start my career, not even in retail. I was in the financial institutions group, covered uh, specialty lenders in crisis. Decided I wanted to do something completely different. Entered the franchising world and have not looked back. I had the unique opportunity of really seeing franchising from both sides. I was part of a large global franchise award where I ran global development and franchising performance for the Burger King brand for RBI. Uh, when we merged with Tim Hortons up to Canada, ran development efforts there. And actually, I became a franchisee also. Stepped on the other side of the table, always wanted to be an entrepreneur and got to do that after selling the dream of large-scale franchise ownership for so long. Became the largest Tim Hortons franchisee in the system. Exited that in 2020 and found my way to Regis. Actually, originally as an independent contractor, I was brought in to lead our transitional business model. We are historically an operator of these salons. We were moving to fully franchise. Business and I knew quite well from my background. And when I got here um, as a consultant, I was like, wow, there is an incredible platform here. No doubt it's been hit a little bit hard by the pandemic, but underlying are incredible brands with strong awareness, great industry background, a new business model that I thought it felt for the new day. I just really, really wanted to be part of kind of Regis 2.0 and new era and new platform. So that's great. really attractive. Fantastic. Let's talk more about that. What are some of the business priorities that you've instilled since you've become CEO? Yeah, no, absolutely. So really the last year was about prioritizing. Um, as I mentioned, the pandemic it is hard. And so kind of look to prioritize really along two lenses. One, getting Regis stabilized and right. And so what that looks like, a lot of last year was on that, focusing on streamlining our GNA, focusing on storing up our balance sheet, focusing on our business, which we did. We sold out of a proprietary technology asset at the time, which gave us capital for a balance sheet. We had a credit agreement refinance that was coming due in March of 2023. We did an amendment extend on that, pushing the maturity out to 2025. And oh, by the way, last year, you know, after losing $70 million in 2021, we broke even and turned it to about the ability. So the big thing on the stabilizer we just in the background prioritizing again what it is that we're going to do for the go-forward nature of accelerating our salon business. So we put inside a great strategy with our franchise owners after listening to them and really focused on priorities moving forward of retaining and recruiting stylists, shifting our customer marketing to retain our customers better, rolling out our new tech platform, and uh, engaging better with our franchisees. Okay, great. Now you're trading under the RGS ticker. How how would you describe the Regis culture today? Yeah, unbelievably resilient, unbelievably passionate. Uh, those are two things that came extremely well through everything that I've seen from the team that have been here going through the pandemic. You have a group of people who are so proud of the Regis brand, are so proud of the brands, they're so proud to be here. We want to bring this company back to prominence. And that has really energized me. I know it's energized Kirsten. And that's been kind of the line two words I can really use to describe us. Resilient passion. All right. And Kirsten, turning to you, what are some KPIs that you could give us? to sort of uh, tell us oh, yeah. what, what's happening right now. Yeah, um, obviously we have a, an EBITDA KPI that we're focused on. Yeah. I think about where, from a strategy standpoint, customer retention, KPIs around customer retention, as well as stylist hours worked per day and per store. So really focusing on driving traffic driving initiatives and monitoring those two KPIs that will ultimately drive traffic. Okay, and this is a question for either one of you, uh, dealer's choice. <laughs> um, you know, we may be entering a recession, nobody knows, but let's talk about, you know, how the company has weathered previous recessions and how are you recession proof, if you will, uh, going forward? Yeah, no, this is a company that's been extremely resilient through recessions. Uh, and I didn't ask this question that has proven that it's not necessarily pandemic proof, but from a recession standpoint, 
Uh, people want to get their haircuts. People want it to get done outside of their home. They want it to be done by trained professionals. We have, and our brands offer an incredible price point, playing in the value segment. You know, twenty to twenty-five dollars haircut. So that's going to track what it is. We're so to come back and utilize this. It's an opportunity to trade down for those who are looking to spend maybe a little less, but have a great value for money. Going to be the so that's is going to be resilient. The things that we're doing to build brand loyalty, stylish loyalty, we're going to make it. Resilient, so we think that we're building the top of the base. There's already a pretty well recession for any business. Okay, and Kirsten, maybe you can talk about sales growth and, and what needs to be done to achieve your sales growth targets. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of the KPIs I already talked about, right? Really focused on customer retention, style is how it's worked, and then kind of shift in our marketing. But... That's that's the beauty of what we're doing, right? So you mentioned priorities. And so we set the priority. Everyone in the company now, we got rid of kind of all these new originalized goals. Everyone is focused on stylist powers we're focused on today, customer retention from a marketing standpoint. So anything that doesn't lead to those two things, kind of we're putting it aside. So we put a lot of effort into ensuring that we're all working toward the same thing. So everything is going to kind of come back to that. Because if we're successful, we're raising stylist powers, raising customer retention, it's going to lead to franchise and sales. It's going to lead Franchise profitability and in turn leads to the success of the business. So everything is pretty All right. Uh, what, what sort of investments are you making as a company to, to, to make it a stronger brand? Yeah, we're putting a lot of investments. Just labor's a big issue. And that's been an issue not only in all of retail, especially here in our salon, our employee base is so rich. And we need that training professional. You know, because we're really investing in the value proposition. We really want to be the best in own something. We really in this space. So we're making heavy investments in technical education for stylists. It's our way of investing in ensuring they're trained to invest in their quality, have high touch economic place that in this industry. So leading in heavily to events there, in-person education events, a lot of investments can be there. And as well as consumer marketing capabilities, new campaigns, new retention campaigns, ability to better live through data, see other factors. So we're making a lot of investments after again. Support on All right. Um, maybe I'll close by asking both of you what are you most excited about in the year ahead? Oh, goodness. Um, I, I think the opportunity that we have, you know, we really have, like Matt said, you know, really laser focused on our like, traffic driving initiative. And I'm excited to see you know, what we do in terms of increasing the traffic and having a yeah, I'm really excited about executing. Like I said, 2022 was an amazing year, stabilizing, bringing the company up, getting on path to profitability. We did all of that without even really scratching the surface of the priorities we just discussed. So we're on this path without even having to execute on that. We're at the beginning stages of executing on those bets for making an education, customer retention. And when that shows through in our results, they can take us to the highest. It's so really about to that school. All right. Thank you very much, Matt Kirsten. This has been RGS Regis Corporation. I'm Jared Banks with IPOH signing off.